Hi, I'm Matt Gagne. I'm the CEO of the Maine Heritage Policy Center, and I wanted to give you a quick update on what MHPC has been up to in 2019. Obviously, we just got through with our legislative session and, in fact, the special session called by Governor Mills to deal with the bills. So now I think that's a good opportunity to take a look back and see what we were able to do this session. I'm not going to sugarcoat things. It was obviously a difficult year with the control of the legislature flipping. It's obviously not quite as uh, fertile territory for us to get ideas through as it used to be. But that said, there are still several wins that I want to tell you about that I think highlight exactly the important work that we do here at the Maine Heritage Policy Center. The first of these successes that I'd like to tell you about is LD-1209. Now this is a bill designed to require that there is a public hearing held for all referendum questions in the state of Maine. Basically what this will do is the legislature will be required if there is any sort of proposed referendum that will go on the ballot to not just simply pass it through and put it on the ballot as they typically have been doing over the course of the last several years. Instead what they'll need to do is actually hold a public hearing on it, invite the public to it, and start to actually hear from them about all of the reasons why any idea is a good idea or a bad idea. It's our belief that this one change alone would probably have been responsible for killing several of the bad referendums we've seen in the last few years because it would have given the public an opportunity to weigh in and highlight the problems with some of these ideas before they even made it to the ballot. That would give the legislature an opportunity to fix them, deny it, or perhaps come back at a later time. The second one I want to tell you about is LD 534. This is a ballot question designed to make the questions that you get on your ballot as simple as possible. Um, this will basically require the Secretary of State to consider the complexity of the language in any sort of ballot question that's put forward to voters and attempt to make it as simple and understandable as possible. And beyond that, it actually also makes sure that we add at the bottom of any question an explanation of what your vote will actually be. So in other words, a yes vote will mean this, a no vote will mean this. We all know about the referendums that have been put before us that are so confusing that you don't know whether or not you're voting yes or voting no, depending on how you answer on the question. That is now going to be solved because of this bill. We're very proud of that. We put together a very good bipartisan coalition to make sure that that could happen. In addition to that, we've also been very active in killing bad ideas. You've seen a lot of those this year, including a gas tax, a carbon tax, uh, a requirement that you would put snow tires on your car every year. There was also a tax on alcohol and two bills on a local option sales tax, which we were very aggressive in fighting and frankly are going to continue to have to be because it's an idea that simply refuses to die. In addition to that, Maine Heritage Policy Center has also launched a new initiative that I'm very proud of and I want to make sure that I tell you about. It's called My Pay, My Say Maine. Essentially what this is, is it's our attempt to inform union members of their rights under the new Janus decision by the Supreme Court to leave their union. It's our belief that it is vital that public employees understand their rights under Janus and know that they cannot be compelled to join a union and they have the right to opt out if they'd like to. So the My Pay My Saying campaign is actually designed to try to help people opt out of that if they so choose to do. We've also published new research, which I'm very proud of as well, including just recently the Ranked Choice Voting Report that we've been working on for several months. This basically takes a look at the question of Ranked Choice Voting and its performance, not only in Maine, but in 96 different races across the country. This is done in several municipalities. So we actually had good data to go on to find out exactly what happens when a Ranked Choice Voting election occurs. In our report, which you can download at mainepolicy.org, and I do, of course, encourage you to read it, we actually took a look at all the claims that were made by proponents of ranked choice voting and tried to analyze whether or not those claims were true or if they were not true. I don't want to spoil the report for you, but going down one by one, it was rather clear that all of those claims that were made by ranked choice voting proponents were in some fashion or completely false. Uh, it's important to note also that in about 11% of cases, we found that ranked choice voting was discounting ballots by the end of the election, and in 61% of the cases, it was producing at the end, after a ranked choice voting was, uh, election was triggered, a false majority. So not even getting to that 50% threshold that we were told was so important. This is a massive, massive report that we worked on for months, and we're very, very proud of, of course, but it's also a first in the nation report. Maine is the first state that has actually tried this experiment, and there's a lot of lessons to be learned from that. Right now there's other states all across the country that are going to be thinking about doing this. There's referendums already cooking in some of these states. The legislatures are already trying to pass this. So there's going to be many states that are going to be looking at this report and actually learning from the main experience and we're very proud to be the leaders on this issue. And speaking of ranked choice voting, we're actually running a petition right now which you can participate in by going to mainpolicy.org slash rcv and adding your voice to ours. We're sending a petition to Governor Mills to actually ask her 
not to expand ranked choice voting to presidential primaries. Obviously, you've probably seen in the news that the legislature was asking her to do that and passed a bill that said so, and she's currently considering that. So if you can get on that very quickly, we may be able to turn the tide a little bit and get her to say no to that at the end of the day. In conclusion, obviously this has been a very difficult year and it will continue to be difficult going forward, but nothing that I just told you about and the other wins that we've had this year would be possible without your generous support for the Maine Heritage Policy Center. We couldn't do it without you. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure I recorded this update and talk to you a little bit about some of the good work that you've helped us do. So thank you on behalf of everyone here at the Maine Heritage Policy Center and stay tuned for some more updates coming up soon.